on November 24th, 2014, I sat and watched with my father as the prosecuting attorney in the Michael Brown case informed the public that the grand jury decided not to indict Officer Darren Wilson. And it was like my heart dropped in my stomach. And my mother didn't want to watch it because it was like a reality TV show, except for it was the same show. We knew the outcome. Nothing was going to change, but me and my father had hoped that an indictment was going to come, but it didn't happen. And then about a week ago, December 3rd, 2014, there was a no indictment in the Eric Garner case. And as a black man, I sat there and I'm thinking to myself as I walk out every day, knowing as my parents tell me, you already have one strike against you, feeling like I am not equal to the next man. But as the, I watched the riots begin to unfold, a question surfaced in my mind. In times like this, why isn't there any unity amongst black America? You got some blacks rioting, you got some blacks peaceful protesting, and I'm wondering why are we unified? You got Jesse and Al just wanna be on TV, just to get some coverage. And I start to realize that these are some perilous times, times that we need one another. Black America is so divided, it's a shame. I felt the winds of racism, the winds of injustice, the winds of inequality, and the winds of despair. The way we treat our black children, the way we don't support our black businesses, and the way black Greeks act today, I wonder, are we truly our brother's keeper? Black children are the future of our nation. They are growing up in a time where a child's life is not equal to that of another race's life. We as black America do not look out for one another's kids. We give our children ridiculous nicknames like Day Day, Man Man, and Pookie. Nicknames like those that automatically put them in categories. We don't invest into our youth. We are quick to call little Day Day bad not knowing his background story. A background story that reveals that he had to look after his little brother and sister because his mother is strung out and his father left them five years ago and he lashes out in school because the elementary school he attends diagnosed him with a mental disability. When that is not the case at all, he just doesn't know how to cope with these situations. And we got alpha brothers that deal with situations like that every day as educators. We as black Americans must take the initiative to partner with our teachers and help our youth progress. We must allow our youth to dream again. Our youth must know that they can be anything that they want to be in life. We should encourage them to dream high and shoot for the stars. One thing that we also don't do, we don't support our black owned businesses. It's it's so sad that our own people can't support one another. Do you know why other races will support their businesses but black people won't? Because a lot of black people have a tough time accepting the fact that they're at the same place you left them at when you decided to create your own business. According to blackdemographics.org, black owned businesses only make up 7% of all U.S. businesses. African American adults ages 10 and up make up 10% of the adult population and are therefore underrepresented in the U.S. in terms of business ownership, especially when it comes to earnings. There are 26.5 million black adults in America. Black owned businesses only produce 135 billion in annual seats, while 10 million Asians produce 506 billion. We are outproduced by fewer Mexican and Chinese Americans. In other words, our black businesses are dying. We must do all that we can to support them. We must support our black lawyers, our black doctors, and our black dentists. How can we expect others to support us when we don't even support ourselves? When I think back to the early 1900s, and I can only imagine what my jewels went through. They attended an Ivy League institution at a time when white people felt like they didn't deserve to be there. 
They needed one another. They had to have unity. They had to have a sense of brotherhood in order to survive. When I sit down and discuss with older alphas about their time in undergrad, they tell me stories about how the Greeks were unified. How the Q's and the Kappa's and the Sigma's and the Alphas, they had to rely on one another in the civil rights movement. They had to be at the forefront. But nowadays, Greeks are looked at as gangs. We initiate members and fail to associate with other organizations. You're a Kappa and I'm an Alpha and we can't hang together. That's not how it's supposed to be. And as Alphas, we must take that stand and be initiative and be better men. We can't call each other out on social media. We can't be trying to downgrade one another. The African American population at Auburn is already minuscule. You would think that we would be more united, but instead we're divided. And Omicron Kappa, we must work to fix this and fix this in a hurry in order to progress our people here at Auburn University. But with that being said, what I want to let you know this evening is not to be frightened and saddened by what's happened in the news. What I want to let you know is that this evening that I feel a shifting in the winds, the winds of racism, the winds of injustice, the winds of inequality, and the winds of despair. You say, how do you know that? I know it because there's a father out there who was a product of the penal system, but not letting that stop him from succeeding and working long nights to make sure that his son doesn't have to endure the same hardships as him. I know because there's a mother out there working in the school system, doing all she can to invest in other children while having the same motivation to push her own. A mother who constantly worries about the safety of her child in this nation. A woman who prays that God keeps him safe and that no harm comes to him. I know because there's a grandmother out there who started school, got married, and had six children, but didn't let that stop her from going back and getting her degree. And every time she sees her youngest grandbaby, she says, shoot for the moon, because if you don't reach it, you'll land amongst the stars. I know because there's a black man out there who lived in the back seat of a car with his mother, could have given up on life, but he didn't let that stop him from achieving his dream of attending Auburn University. I know because there was a group of young men, heartbeat, hearts in a beat, young men who put a smile on our face and sung their heart, sung the, I got happy today. Young men who could be selling drugs or out there on the streets. But they decided to stay in school and they are on track to attend, to attend college. I know because there is a black man with a PhD, three degrees from Auburn University, not being too high and mighty, but giving back to the community by investing in our youth with programs like Alpha Academy. I know because there is an alumni chapter out there with no more than 15 members, they have the drive and the desire to make a difference in the Auburn Opelika area. I can see the Uncle Sam poster now saying, all I need is just a few good men. I know because there are young black men in an undergrad chapter at Auburn University who truly practice the motto of I am my brother's keeper. Brothers who accepted two men who weren't initiated in their chapter, but have the courage to treat, the, treat them like they are their own. Men who are future engineers, journalists, and lawyers who are going to impact this world today. I want to let you know, don't despair. Because there is a shifting in the wind. And you can look at these young men right here. And these older gentlemen right here. And you can see, don't despair by what you see in the news. Because change is coming. You best believe it, change is coming. Slowly, but sure. Thank you.